All right, welcome back to part three of my series of uh, basing a bolt action American medium mortar done by Warlord Games. This will be in another uh, brief segue here. I don't know how many parts this is going to be, but I don't know, I'm getting kind of antsy about getting these guys painted. I'm sure you're somewhat sick of seeing these guys. What I'm going to do right now is uh, I'm basically going to give the give the entire base a uh, base coat of uh, black. I know that uh, I did glue the rocks on and all that stuff, but basically what's going to happen is uh, I want to paint the ground black so I can get uh, a really good uh, browning pattern. I really need to cover up the, uh, the pumice, make it less sand-like. And uh, I can do that by uh, basically black. So, all right, you'll notice uh, using a cheap paint because I'm doing a base. This is Apple Barrel, available at any big box store. Typically, you get my stuff, as always. This is starting to sound like a big plug for Michael's Craft Store. But uh, Michael's Craft Store seems to fit most of my needs. You can also get it at Walmart, uh, Hobby Lobby, places like that. What we're going to be doing is I really, uh, sorry about that. I really got to water down my uh, my black to get it to flow. So that's what I've got is two compartments right here, one for uh, watery, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to really smear it up, and water it up. Uh, that's the reason I go with the lower cost Apple Barrel paints for this because. Uh, using the Viejo or using the uh, Army Painter or whatever you happen to be using uh, you know it's all you're really doing is you're uh, really just trying to get some water into the pigments get this stuff to flow okay so let's start off with the single dude I'll command all right so that's all we're gonna do we're gonna let this stuff kinda saturate it on its own don't worry too much if uh, some of the sand showing through uh, what we're really trying to do is to get the pigment to like really bleed in really bleed into it so this is obviously the easiest part of the painting tutorial because uh, this is the a trained monkey could do it portion which is how I like to roll uh, you'll notice that uh, the guy's got a few dark spots on himself too that the uh, primer didn't go. So at this point, feel free to touch up your little dudes here. See, just like that. You don't need to put it on thick. Just where the, uh, you know, my coveted El Cheapo brand spray primer did not cover. I'll make sure we get all his nooks and crannies. That sounded dirtier than it is. Okay, a little more water. Pretty much more of the same. Uh, you definitely want to make sure the black gets in and around the cork. Because uh, the cork can be kind of finicky as far as the large gaps and this makes a, a great way to fill in the, uh, the gaps that maybe you couldn't quite reach and that might have been a little wider than you'd like you guys can fast forward this a little bit if you want I'm not going to be dropping a whole lot of epiphanies here in a couple seconds so if you're like me when you watch YouTube videos, I get the point of uh, watching somebody kind of paint. So, okay. Feel free to fast forward. If I can figure out how to do it on the camera, I will.
All right, fast forward ended. I'll try and put a note on my. Uh, I'll try and put a note on the actual video itself. Make sure that you know I'm back. Don't panic. It looks like it's globbing on. Just don't panic. Okay. Keywords. I know I'm uh, doing a little Douglas Adams homage there, but uh, it's the truth. All right. It's going to look really bad. It's going to look really bad right now because the paint is just everywhere. Lots of paper towels, I recommend. So. That's all there is to that. Uh, I will tell you that some of you guys are going to try and do it the easy way out. You're going to try and use uh, spray paint. Don't. You might make it look okay. You might get a reasonable finish out of it. But uh, invariably it's not going to uh, fill in the uh, cracks like a big heavy water paste will. So again, acrylics, apple barrel, cheap. Cheap, cheap. Always use your 50% off coupon or 40%, whatever you happen to have. And uh, if you can find it in the clearance section, even better. So, that's it. I'll uh, speed this up a notch, and you can see what this looks like when it's dry. That way I can prove that uh, it doesn't look like a big sopping black nasty mess. Uh, so, see you in a few seconds. Or, well, few seconds for you, 24 hours for me. See you in a minute. All right, as promised, the uh, second section, it's been uh, 24 of my hours, so you can kind of see if I go really slow. Okay, should look like a very volcanic wasteland. All right, so the brushes I'm using this is a very stiff bristle brush. I got it brush. Sorry, I got it at the dollar store. Uh, I don't know what brand it is, but typically it's the. Uh, one thing you got to do about these dollar store brushes is make sure you get all the uh, loose bristles out of it. So this is a artificial brush. And again, these colors are not uh, what you have to use. You can use any color you want. Uh, today I'm going to be using uh, golden brown and country tan. I also like uh, twill and a couple other colors. You can use a darker brown if this comes out better for you. It's kind of a more muddy look. I'm going for more of a sandy, deserty look. So, without further ado, and again, save yourself some money. You don't have to go out and buy the best. I noticed in my last video I got my big old knuckles in the way for a lot of the painting. So, okay, this is going to be uh, kind of a heavy dry brush. And by that I mean you're going to leave a little more paint on than you normally would. So, I'm just basically twirl it around. And that's it. I mean, again, wish this were uh, really a lot more complicated. There it is. Don't panic if you get some on the troopers. Don't panic if you get any on the rocks. In general, just don't panic. Sorry, again with the knuckles. We're putting a uh, brown on here. Just to offset it a little. And again, if you can try and keep it off the rocks, that's good. If not, like I said, it seems a little counterintuitive to uh, paint the rocks black and then to. Well, I call them rocks, but I'm saying the cork. 
paint the cork black and then uh, repaint it sort of brown. Okay, so we're going to skip ahead again to avoid large quantities of painting. All right, continuing on, I've allowed the brown to dry. Here we see it's taking shape a little bit. I think you'll find that the pumice allows a lot easier, uh, well, it's a little, a little faster with time, as opposed to putting a little spackle on and then putting the uh, the railroad, little model railroad ballast or some other kind of sand over the top of it. So uh, I think you see that you get pretty quality product. Again, uh, some speed painting. The last was a, a little more of a wet dry brush. This is going to be more of a true dry brush. And again, I'll fast forward this as well. Just the top. Okay. You get the idea. I'll speed that along and show the next segment. Awesome. So more fantastic time-lapse photography. So you see we've uh, finished up the last of the paints for the browns. You also notice it's a sort of a splotchy effect. And that's exactly what we're looking for. A little bit of the darker, a little bit of the lighter, dry brush, fantastic. So uh, now we've got to introduce a couple different colors. We've got this lovely color, should be easy to find, dark gray. And again, it doesn't have to be folk art, it doesn't have to be this brand, but I will tell you the acrylics that you get from uh, Michaels are fine. The only thing I would caution you on is like this brand, the My Studio, it's like 50 cents per container and it is absolutely terrible. So if it's between My Studio and Folk Art or uh, this other brand, uh, Craft Paint, which is Apple Barrel or uh, Plaid, looks like, or this one, spend the extra 50 cents because the amount of acrylic per water is uh, much, much better. Do not buy that other brand, the uh, the lower brand. Trust me, uh, I'm cheap, but uh, I don't need to botch my results with that. So you're going to basically uh, go with some uh, dark gray as your base coat on the rocks. Again, using our handy dandy dollar store, slightly bristly, incredibly hard paintbrush. We're going to basically just overcoat the rocks. It's not going to look like much because the black is not going to contrast well. Feel free to leave some black in the cracks of the rock. Not a big deal if you don't. But uh, really the dark gray is going to become uh, a lot more of the base color. This is where the, the texture of the cork kind of shines through a little more. And again, if you don't get incredibly good coverage, don't go too deep into the tan on the rock because you're trying to make a blending effect. Like that. So the, the pumice kind of comes up a little bit. You don't need to like completely invade that. So leave a little bit of the leave some of the pumice turf as if it's like a mud pushed up against the rock. So again, the side, a little bit of dry brushing, not a huge stark color contrast. Really we're just trying to bring some more gray back into the uh, back into the palette here as far as the rocks go. Your wow moment's going to be when you start touching up with the uh, 
the light gray. And you're really going to get a chance to see the uh, texture of the rocks kind of shine through, as it were. They're not too bad right now, but. Anyway. That's it. Feel free to put a few more dabs of paint if you need them. If you do, if you don't, leave it be. Okay. That's it. We'll let that dry a little. Through the miracle of modern time lapse photography, I'll see you in a few seconds when this stuff is completely dry. Okay. More fun with time lapse. So the rocks are all painted up in a nice dark gray. And I'm going to uh, attack it with a very, very light shade of gray. This is dolphin gray. Realistically, any light shade of gray will work. Just fine. Okay, so we're going to have to dry brush. This is going to require a lot of dry brush, a lot more dry brush than the last episode issue. Sorry, episode. We're literally going to run it across. It's going to look very stark white in comparison. Very stark white. Alright. You're really just trying not to make the rocks look like they're covered in bird droppings. I guess that's a goal. Awesome, huh? A little more with the uh, white paint palette. Well, the lighter gray palette, anyway. Sorry, got my knuckles on the picture again. Again, you got some dark areas. Kind of coat it up a little. Okay, so you can see what we've got going on there. The gray makes a pretty nice contrast against the dark gray. It gives you a really sharp rock. Okay, maybe a little more right there. Don't panic with this stuff if you go over it because you're going to end up dry brushing some of the uh, some of the brown into some matte whites anyway. There you go so far. You got a nice color contrast with that. We will be doing uh, one more color because if the rocks like too white, it kind of drives me nuts. So what I can do is I usually like to try and take a little, a little mix. And with the mix, I'll overcoat that with some of the white as well. So if we get some of your dark paint left over, you can put a little bit of that on. And that is going to break up the rock formation quite nicely as well. So that's like a, and if you didn't feel like taking the time to mix the rock, or mix the rock paint, that's why you don't put the guy back before you're ready. You can offset it with like a medium gray. And just keep doing some mix here. It's going to come out a little brownish looking. And that's okay as well. 
So if your rocks are a little too stark, just go ahead and overcoat them with a little extra medium. Just leave a little of the whitish undercoat. There you go. Nothing to it. If you decide you want a little more gray, you want to put a little back, a little bit lighter, go ahead and go ahead and just kind of sweep it. You can do this several times. It doesn't hurt anything. Just be mindful not to like completely fill in the crevices. There you go. You got some nicely, nicely contrasting rock. Cool. That's done with this segment. Hope you stay tuned for the next segment, which will be basing and painting part four. We're actually painting some dudes up here that we've been playing with the whole time. And so part four will be actual figure painting of uh, real mortar people. So, go figure. Thanks.